everyone, welcome to another edition of Trial by Magis with Pilots Academy. Today is the first video I've put up since the release of the 1.9.6 patch, and I will be addressing the complete and total rebuild of the crew system. So, after a little cameo here by the Kostikov 302 fighter, let's just dive right into it and see what we have here. You can access the pilot screw, uh, crew skills by clicking over here on this area, which will pull up this window. Free points are declared up here. Now, for those of you who had previous uh, well-trained crews, you're going to have a lot of skill points to distribute. And you can always reset those skills with a retention of all experience gained for credits or gold. Now, seeing as you don't lose any experience by spending credits, I would always recommend that you do that, unless if you are just extremely poor on credits, rich in gold, and don't have the time or patience to grind up credits using your premium or elite aircraft. Let's take a look at the skill tree here. This is quite a bit different than the selection uh, we had before. This much more closely mirrors the World of Warships crew skill system than the World of Tanks system that Warplanes emulated in patches 1.0 to 1.9.5. These, these skills are arranged in tiers, although Unlike warships, you don't have to buy skills from the first two tiers before you can pick up one from the third. Uh, if you have the points available and you wish to right away, you can pick up the special skills on the bottom uh, the bottom row. Now let's review what each one of these is, what it does, and how useful it is. Uh, first up, we have fire resistance. This reduces the duration of a fire and the damage it can cause to your aircraft by 10%. Uh, this is moderately useful, but I have not yet taken it on any of my aircraft because I always carry one of these on my aircraft, a manual fire extinguisher, which costs 3,000 credits and does the exact same thing, well, actually does better than this ability once a match. The moment you are on fire, you can expend your fire extinguisher and put out that fire. This ability on an airplane that is already carrying the fire extinguisher is only useful to you after you have expended your consumable. So, for that reason I would uh, say do not take this unless you just have a point to spend and nowhere else to put it. Next up, we have eagle-eyed. This increases the range at which enemy aircraft are detected by your pilot by 20%. This roughly mirrors the sight range increase that was on uh, the previous incarnations of the game, but it is slightly nerfed. This does not increase your sight range as far as a 100% sight range increase crew skill would. Uh, for that reason, I would also declare Eagle Eyed to be a back burner ability that you only acquire for one point if you have one point and nothing else to put it into. Next up, Battle Tested. This roughly duplicates the old stamina ability by reducing chance of injury to your pilot by 20%. However, it combines the old stamina ability with the old veteran ability, which improved the controllability of your aircraft when you have damaged components like a tail or a wing. This is a two-point ability, being much more useful than the first two. Uh, but I would still call this a second tier ability as far as when you want to pick it because it's really only useful when you're getting the tar beaten out of you and hopefully the point of the game is to avoid getting the tar beaten out of you so hopefully you can keep out of situations where this would become useful. Next up we have our first ability that I consider a must-have for most aircraft. Not all, but most. This is Engine Guru 1. This, combined with its partner on the second tier here, Engine Guru 2, combine to duplicate the effect of the old Engine Guru ability at 100% proficiency. 
combined, it increases your engine thrust by a total of 5% and increases your top speed by 2%. So that 2% increase to top speed actually makes this better than the old Engine Guru ability. If you are in a aircraft that has a high power engine in it, or more than one engine, like uh, German heavies, American heavies, or German lights and American lights uh, that, that depend upon their strong engines, like the Thunderbolts, the Mustangs, the 109s, and the 190s. This is definitely a required skill to take. Next up, we have Marksman. This increases the accuracy of your forward firing weapons by 5%. And uh, Fluff Tech says it significantly increases chances of a hit. Now, this is a ability that is good to take on an aircraft that has a lot of forward firing guns that are spread out, uh, namely across the forward uh, leading edge of the wings. So like uh, a Japanese aircraft or a British aircraft will uh, really benefit from this. The American fighters like the P-51 and the P-47, which have heavy amounts of guns out on their wings, will also benefit from the marksman ability. Uh, German aircraft, which tend to have all of their guns center-mounted in the nose of, their aircraft, of the, uh, the frame, won't benefit from this too much because their guns are already very accurate by being uh, placed close to the central mass of the uh, of the airplane. Same thing goes for the Soviet aircraft. Finally, over here we have your ground pounder ability and multi-role fighters, although in my opinion if you're a multi-role fighter concentrating on your ground attack abilities, stop flying multi-role fighters and get into an attacker. The Demolition Expert increases damage caused by bombs and rockets and the blast radius by 15%. This is a finally a good ability for, uh, for attackers because as the time has gone on through the game, the blast radius of your bombs has been continually nerfed over time. This is a way to get that back so you can swat nasty tailgater fighters off of your tail with your bombs again with a bit more ease. Also makes air burst detonation rockets easier to use in kills against other aircraft. Second tier, Aerobatics Expert. This is a two-point ability that I highly recommend for Russian, British, and Japanese aircraft. Any aircraft that depends upon its maneuverability for survival instead of speed or altitude performance needs to have this ability. Take it before anything else. Next up, Aerodynamics Expert. This increases the effect of aircraft polish, polished covering, lightweight airframe, control surface adjustment, and improved flaps by 20%. Uh, basically, uh, this is an ability that only improves the performance of equipment that you already have mounted on your aircraft. So if you don't have any of the equipment that this skill calls for mounted on your aircraft, at least two of them. If you've only got one mounted, don't bother using this ability. If you've got two, or best yet, three of them mounted, go ahead and take this and see how it works out for you. I haven't tried it out yet because it is highly dependent upon the equipment you place on your aircraft, and I have not yet gotten an aircraft combination, equipment combination that would make the most of uh, aerodynamics expert. Next up, we have another outstanding uh, ground attack aircraft ability. This is protection expert. Increases the effect of improved covering, reinforced airframe, additional armor plates, and concealing livery by 20%. This will further increase your hit point pool, further increase your resistance to critical hits, and further increases the damage reduction of your aircraft versus ground-based anti-aircraft and aerial rear gunners. An outstanding ability for only three points. Uh, I've already covered the second engine guru. Next up we have Marksman 2. This further increases the accuracy of forward-firing weapons by 
and the accuracy of firing at actively maneuvering targets by 10%. Uh, it's cumulative with the first ability. Now, the important thing with Marksman 2 is that is that second line, the accuracy of firing at actively maneuvering targets by 10%, because there is an ability in the special pilot skill section on the third tier that this ability helps to counter. So, if you're going Marksman 1, you might as well save up the points and go for Marksman 2, especially if you uh, find yourself having difficulty with people who have taken crew skills that uh, grant them damage reduction while they are actively maneuvering against you. Finally, here we have another uh, multi-role fighter and uh, ground attack uh, aircraft skill. This increases the chance of hitting aerial targets with rockets by 25%. Now, I'm not sure exactly how this works mechanically, because all of the rockets in this game are dumb fire, fire and forget weapons. They have no guidance on them at all. So, I have not tried this one out to uh, a great extent with my rocket aircraft. I haven't noticed that it causes uh, any kind of uh, proximity detonation. So... This one's caveat emptor, buyer beware. Your mileage may vary with your results here because I myself am not aware fully of what the mechanics are behind this ability. On the final tier for your pilot, we have firefighter. This extinguishes fires quickly by active maneuvering, gain to maintain a high angular velocity in any axis to extinguish a fire. Now this mimics history because Pilots did not have access to a fire extinguisher that they could use to extinguish a fire on the wing or in the engine bay of their aircraft. They had to do very specific aerial maneuvers in order to starve that fire of oxygen and put it out. And that's what this ability right here mimics. You have to do some wild maneuvering after uh, you've caught fire, and you'll be able to put out the fire thereby. Uh, this ability is useful because having this ability basically remove the need to having the fire uh, extinguisher consumable on your aircraft and will allow you to replace that with a, a different consumable, perhaps a uh, weapon cooldown, uh, an engine boost, or something of that nature. Or even a uh, improved control surface uh, consumable. Uh, moving on, we have something that has become one of my personal favorites, Cruise Flight. This is a three-point skill, so it is considered quite powerful. And what this does is it increases your pilot's view range by 20%, engine thrust and top speed by 3% when the aircraft has not received damage for 20 seconds. The effect wears off once the aircraft is fired at or hit. So, when you begin a match, Cruise Flight is active and will stack with the effects of your engine guru, making the initial climb uh, when you join a battle very strong, and it increases your view range for that initial contact. So cruise flight is very useful uh, at the beginning of the match and th over the course of a match as you cruise about looking for dogfights to get involved in or other aircraft to ambush. It is not active while you are actively in combat, just the segments of time when you are moving from fight to fight. Next up, we have Resilience. Uh, this repairs all critical damage and heals all crew injuries, reduces engine and weapon overheating by 50%, and increases maneuverability and engine thrust when the aircraft loses 70% of hit points. Skill is activated automatically once per battle and is effective until the end of the battle. So basically, it uh, puts your aircraft into enrage mode. Um, this is a three-point skill. Uh, this is not a skill that I'm going to recommend or use personally because the important part here is it requires that you get the absolute tar beaten out of you before it goes into effect. But once it goes into effect, you're now a 30% health rage machine with improved performance. Eh, if that's your thing, it could pay off. But personally, I prefer avoiding getting shot at and winning with more than half of my health intact at the end of the game. 
Moving on, evasive target. This is the ability I was referring to earlier when we were talking about Marksman 2. Evasive target reduces damage received and chance of receiving critical damage in pilot injuries by 25% when actively maneuvering. Gain and maintain a high angular velocity and pitch and roll to activate the skill. This is another skill where you will have, like the resilience and cruise flight, when the ability is activated by the maneuvers you are performing, you will have a little green symbol at the bottom of the HUD indicating that it is indeed active. Now this is an excellent ability to have on very maneuverable aircraft. It basically gives you damage reduction and you will pay for it in skill points. It costs four skill points to master this particular ability. Uh, I highly recommend it for all Japanese aircraft, British aircraft, and Soviet aircraft. These are all aircraft that tend to be more maneuverable than their peers, but lower on engine performance. So, you can put the uh, skill points that other pilots are putting into improving their engine performance and use it to improve your evasion. My personal philosophy with the new crew skill system is to go deep as opposed to going wide. Use your crew skills combined with the equipment you have mounted on your aircraft to increase the strengths of that aircraft rather than try to cover for the weaknesses. Use the strengths to cover for the weaknesses in, instead of trying to make your weaknesses stronger because this is all percentile based and uh, a score that you are weak in will not be improved very well when you're dealing with percentages. Next up we have Raptor Strike. This is an outstanding ability to have for high-flying, high-speed aircraft, particularly Americans, Germans, and uh, jet-powered monsters like 302 that we're previewing here. This increases the chance of setting an aircraft, enemy aircraft on fire and causing critical damage by 50% when diving and attacking with forward-firing weapons. This attack becomes effective when your speed approaches maximum dive speed and pitch angle exceeds 45 degrees. Now those are very specific circumstances that require you to commit to an attack before this ability will come into effect. But if you slap someone while the Falcon is green, they're probably going to explode right in front of you. Four point skill, very powerful, highly recommended to aircraft that match the flight profile of the ability. Finally, we have Adrenaline Rush. This reduces weapon overheating by 25% and increases firing accuracy by 10% after destroying an enemy aircraft. And this ability lasts for 10 seconds. This ability is useful for any aircraft, but it's not as useful as the previous specialized uh, abilities would be. So this would be something that you tack on after you've gotten everything else that's useful because it gives you a nice little a little rush to get back into the fight and take out the next guy after you've taken down one aircraft. I see this being useful on anything. Being covered, let's pull up something that has a tail gunner on it. Here is my Nakajima Ki-8, and here's his gunner. Gunner abilities. There's only two tiers. The first tier has Endurance, which basically duplicates the stamina ability of the previous crew uh, skill set. Vigilance increases range at which enemy aircraft are detected by the rear gunner by 20%, so that is our replacement for the gunner's sight range increase. Armorer increases burst length of a rear gun by 20%. This is an entirely new ability and one that I highly recommend as it is a straight up DPS boost to your outgoing damage. 
Second tier, we have defensive fire, which reduces damage from an enemy aircraft, which the rear gunner is firing at, by 30%. Purely defensive ability, but a very nice ability to have for a tail gunner that does not put out a lot of damage, like the early German heavies, the BF-110B, BF-110E, low-tier German attack aircraft like the FW-189C Uhu. If you're not putting out a lot of damage and you're not going to get a lot of benefit from boosting that damage output on the rear gunner, you might as well make it useful by using it to screw up the enemy's aim and re reduce the amount of damage you're taking. Next ability over, this is combined with Armorer. This is Ballistic Expert, which increases the firing range of a rear gun by 15% and effect of rear gun stabilization by 20%. It's a straight-up range increase for your gun, so your rear gunner is going to be acquiring the target more quickly, firing at them for a longer period of time. It's a damage boost. Worth three points. Very good if you have a good tail gunner uh, damage-wise for the tier. Next over. Quick Reflexes. Reduces aiming time of your rear gun by 50%. This cuts in half the amount of time it takes for the gunner to begin shooting at an enemy aircraft once it enters your, uh, your rear gunner's firing arc. It's a, uh, it's a damage boost. Next up, Precision Gunner. The rear gunner concentrates fire on the most vulnerable sections of an enemy aircraft. The chance of causing critical damage by a rear gun is significantly increased. This is another great ability to use if your rear gunner is not great on putting out a lot of damage. With this ability, you still won't be doing a lot of damage to enemy aircraft with your tail gunner, but you have a good chance of causing critical damage to them and really messing up their day by damaging a wing, injuring the pilot, or fouling up their engine. Finally, we have the granddaddy of them all. This is the best tail gunner skill to have in the game. Weakest Link. The rear gunner concentrates fire on enemy aircraft with the fewest hit points. This takes care of the funny business of a pair of flighted pilots coming in. One of them has full health, the other one has eight hit points. The full health guy comes into your firing range first, gets your tail gunner's attention, and then flies off to the side and uh, holds his attention while the nearly dead guy comes up, adds insult to injury, and shoots you down while your tail gunner ignores him. Weakest link means the tail gunner will immediately switch his attention to that damaged aircraft when he enters range and shoot him off your tail before they can say, ha ha, gotcha. That is pretty much everything. The big takeaway with the, the crew skills, from my point of view, is concentrate on your strengths. Don't cover your weaknesses. Use your strengths to cover your weaknesses. If you've got a weak tail gunner, use them to cause module damage and damage reduction to you. If you have a maneuverable aircraft, increase that maneuverability and make it more deadly in a dogfight. If you have a fast aircraft, make it even faster so it's easier to set up your attacks and make your escape once you're finished. I hope this has been illuminating for everyone. It has been an interesting weekend for me, and I must say that uh, this entire crew skill change has been a change for the better and a step up. I look forward to more changes to the game in the future if this is a hint of what we have coming our way. Good hunting.